eternity. The next life is forever. And the Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. The date of our death has been appointed by God. We don't know when that is. The most important part of that service was the sermon. Because that's when Kevin told you the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that truth is the fact that every single one of you has a soul that is eternal. And that soul, at death, will either go to heaven or hell. And I know some of you are probably thinking, oh, that's being kind of morbid talking about death but I mean think about this why is it that when there's a, a great disaster or some celebrity dies you buy the newspapers you turn on the media because you can't wait to talk about it and give your opinion and gossip about someone else's death heaven is to be with God for eternity in the heavenly city if you go to hell that's eternal torment now Kevin explained to you how a loving God would send people to eternal torment. That's because he is a loving God and he has to punish sinners. God's love is infinite and he offers it to every single one of you. And if you turn that love down, then you will go to hell. That's what the Bible tells us. But I can give every one of you also two pieces of very good news. One, every single one of you is made in the image of God. And two, God longs to run to you, put his arms around you, cover you in kisses, put a ring on your finger and invite you into his party. That is very, very important. To any woman here who is not saved and not believed in Jesus Christ, you need to take that seriously. Because your sins stand before you. As Kevin said, I don't stand here with a righteous man. I have done many sins in my time. But Jesus took those sins away when he went on the cross and died. I would, I would beseech every one of you in love to look to Jesus Christ. You need to do that. It's very, very important. Let the one who wishes take the water of life, the blessings of Christ, salvation in him without cost. And if you receive the love of Jesus Christ, it is the best thing in the whole world. It's uncomparable. Your life will change. But I didn't believe there was any God. I didn't believe there was anything supernatural. I was an atheist, although I obviously thought Jesus was a good fella. So I told my mum this and she said if he'd offered to put that. So I started going to this church a couple of times. So I met with Stephen who was the associate vicar and he said to me, I, I arranged to meet him some evening, uh, I think it was before a service or one evening he said come and talk and he told me a bit about Jesus. I think what he told me was if you had, that everyone's got a void in their soul and if you don't fill it with Jesus it will be filled with other things. And he also told me, or well, I think this is what he told me, because I was still drinking, it's pretty hazy. We have a prayer, you can pray. If you pray this prayer and give your life to Jesus, then you'll be a Christian. So, as I said, there was no light in my life. I didn't see any future for myself. And I just thought, yes, I will, I will do this. And as a man of my word, I thought, so I'm going to give myself to Jesus at this point. And in some ways I did. I did give myself to Jesus at that point. He said, say this prayer, say this prayer. I presume he gave me false assurance. And I went away. Within three days, I stopped blaspheming. Within two months, I'd stopped drinking. And within maybe two years, I'd given up smoking as well. So my life did change. That was in 2002. So at that point, I was going to All Saints, which is a charismatic Anglican church. And I also got a church on a Sunday morning, which was a more middle-of-the-road Anglican church. And I, I, I stuck. I, I tried my hardest. I read my Bible. I prayed. I saw in my Bible that there was more, and at both of these churches, I seemed to my thinking to get half of the truth. The charismatic church, they tell you about the spirit, it's a deep Christianity, you've got to be born again. But they don't seem to live a pure and holy life, or at least try to. It, it seems to be very, you know, the Bible says, you know, if we know we're the children of light because we walk in darkness. So they walk in a degree of darkness. It wasn't a full on prosperity gospel, but it was some form of that, that you can live this life, you don't have to, you know, it's all about the spirit, you can live how you want, you know, you can do this and that. And at the other church, I got more, you've got to live the life of Christ, but there was no depth to it, there was no, you've got to be born again or anything, if all you've got to do is come to church and live this kind of life, and you'll be all right. But I, I had a sense, that I read, my, I read my Bible, and I knew there was more to it than this. So I was searching, but I think actually I was probably on the road to becoming 
a weekend Christian. I took up my fishing again. I was doing good things. And I, I would have probably ended up back, although I was keen. But the Lord was merciful. I met Paul. Paul started coming to All Saints Church. And I, I recognised something in Paul that he was, he was like me. He was interested in the Bible and talking about the Bible and trying to do things more. So sometime later, Paul phoned me up on a wet Tuesday afternoon and says, we're having a Bible study at our house tonight. A chap called Kevin's going to be talking. Would you like to come? So I thought to myself, no, of course I wouldn't like to come. I'd like to stay here and not bother going out. Paul, seeking for the Lord like you do, striving for the narrow gate. I said, yes, of course, Paul. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'll come. So I came. I went up to chapel, met Kevin. Kevin spoke, I think on one, the second half of the first chapter of John. To be honest, that I still had a lot of charismatic teaching in me. I didn't agree with everything Kevin said. But the thing that most touched me about when Kevin and, and some, of, some of you others came was the sense of loving your life and the sense of seeking after God and living a life that would be pleasing to God. And I'd not seen that anywhere else. So that got me interested. You know, I wanted to know more. I, I felt there was something there. So... I carried on going bi-weekly to the uh, chapel uh, prayer meetings at Paul's because I'd set up my own prayer meeting at this time for a couple of people, trying to encourage them and, you know, trying to get something going, some kind of God's message really true. Although I, I was the blind leading the blindly, I had no idea, and I was trying to lead them. But I was learning from Kevin at this time, and uh, the penny was starting to drop. And then Paul phoned me again, God bless him, because I've been talking to Paul on the phone about things and we've been talking about hell. Is it a real hell or is it you just die or things like that? And Paul said, Kevin doesn't usually announce what's on the Friday Bible study, but tonight, because this was about four o'clock on Friday, he's going to be teaching on hell. Would you like to come? So again, I thought, no, the last thing I want to do is drive to Middleton. But yes, of course I want to go. You've got to go. You know, if, if, you, if, if you're searching for it, you've got to go. So I went and Kevin did preach on hell. And again, I was still thinking about it, and I had this old teaching within me. And, but at the end of that, Kevin gave a gospel presentation, and he explained Charles Spurgeon's conversion. Now, I can't remember what the verse was. Kevin might tell you after. But at the end of that, Spurgeon gave himself to the Lord, and he said the, his heart was strangely warm. Now, I knew that that had happened to John Wesley as well. And I'd thought that when I was saved, so I just said to the Lord that night, Lord, why can't I have that? Why can't I have that? And at that moment, my, moment, my heart was strangely warmed. That's the only thing I can exp explain it out. My heart was warmed at that time. And then sometime later in the night, I'm not sure whether it was when I was driving home or I was in bed thinking about it, it happened again. It didn't happen on, on the top of any great thought, but just, Lord, can I have that? And... I didn't quite know what to say about it. I did tell Paul the next Tuesday we went there, but I didn't tell anyone else. And uh, I was still thinking, I'm still going to my prayer group, and, and what Kevin was telling me was becoming more and more true. That what had actually happened to me earlier, I couldn't have become a Christian in 2002. You see, I thought I had, but I couldn't have done because becoming a Christian is about belief. You've got to believe if you don't know the truth, the true truth, you can't really believe. Although I had gripped hold of Jesus at that point because my life was a complete and utter mess. As I'm saying, this is not, I'm not giving you theology or doctrine. I believe that to Kevin. This is just my life story. And that's what happened. So coming up to, I think it was this week, it was building a building on me. I'm thinking about it. And then one morning, I can't remember which morning it was, the Lord just gave me a picture gave me a picture of people walking to the gas chambers like with a Nazi. Although this time there was no guards. There was no guard. All I had to do was step out of that line. I didn't have to do, go down there. I could just step out. That, that's all that was needed. And he gave me another picture of, of being in prison. I was in prison. I was in a prison cell of my life. And I was trying to get out. And I was banging my head on the door trying to get out. And I realised all I had to do was open it. And walked down. There was no guards. All the, the gates were open. And I just walked down. And I realised it's as all as dust. Before Jesus. Before Jesus Christ from his cross. It is all as dust. He had done it all for me. 
Even me, the greatest of sinners, he had done it. And that was my life. I just sent an email to Kevin. In some ways, it, I, I'd seen Jenny when she'd been uh, born again here. She was very effused, but in some ways it was just a great relief. You know, I'd been banging my head on that wall for eight years, or all my life. So, that's my story. Can I just pray with you all? Would that be all right to finish? Lord Jesus, I thank you for everything. Thank you, Lord, that you died upon that cross. For my sins, Lord, as I called out amongst the scuffers, Lord, my sins, I took you there, Lord. I just thank you. You gave me life and forgave those things. I pray, Lord, for all those who do not know you, Lord. That they too will step out of line and receive your peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.